In this video, I'm going to show you how I create a responsive lower third like this one in only minutes. So let me show you what all it can do. You can easily adjust the size of the title and everything else will readjust. You can do the same thing for the subtitle one, subtitle two, but that's not all. You can actually select the subtitle and you can duplicate it, put it underneath your subtitle two, and it will automatically inject it into your lower third without you doing any extra work. So you can resize things and it will automatically affect everything else. But you can also do this. You can actually move this one up. Like I can move it up one layer. It will rearrange everything and so on. So it's very easy to do. And again, everything is responsive, but that's not all. You can actually inject images. So we're going to bring in this Euchre Media logo. I'm going to position it right underneath our title text. I'm going to parent it to our controls null, and I'm going to select the subtitle and uh, get the anchor point and position. I'm going to copy it and then paste it. And as you can see, it automatically rearranges everything. But here's something it doesn't do. This shape right here, the height of it doesn't see the height of our logo. So what I need to do is inject the height of it into to this shape. And to do that, it's very easy. All you have to do is tag it. So you can go to the beginning of this name here and then just insert underscore. And just like that, it will automatically include it into your design. So now you can adjust the size of it. Everything will rearrange. You can move it down. And as you can see, things will readjust. But here's another thing you can do. You can actually go to the controls and I have all these controls you can adjust. You can adjust the spacing. You can also adjust the width on the margin. The same thing for the height. You can also adjust the roundness. And I just want to show you that I'm only rounding two corners and the rest are sharp. You can also change the color of the background and it's dynamic to where it will readjust the color of everything else. So for example, if I change the color to something like this, notice the text will change the color. The top one just does black or white. So if the background is dark, then the text will be white. So if I go to black, as you can see, the text will be white. But if I go to white, then the text will be black. The bottom ones here, they are basically inverting this color. So whatever that color is, they will invert it automatically. So yeah, it's very dynamic. And that's what I'm going to show you how to set up in this video. Before I show you how to do this, I do want to throw in a disclaimer. So the tool that I'll be using to create this lower third does not exist yet. It only lives on my computer right now. However, I do plan on releasing it soon. And so this is more of a sneak peek kind of video to show you what's to come. And basically the tool that I'm using is called Smart Functions. It's just a text document that stores all of the expressions that I've developed over the years as I create Mogerts and trust me, I've created a lot of them. So instead of retyping those expressions, I stored them in this text document. And to navigate them, I created this web page. And it might change, it's just something I create for myself. And I try to be more mindful of you guys because I do realize that eventually I will release this. So I'm trying to document everything. Like for example, here's a function called Smart Anchor. It tells you the code that you need, description, the parameters it uses and what it returns. And I have that for every single one function. If I need Smart Anchor, I just copy it and then I paste it. All right, so let's get started. I do have all of my assets already brought in. So I do have a null layer that has all of my controls. And these controls I just brought in by going to the expression controls and you'll see them in here. We have a slider, color control. So these are sliders and then we have a color control. So I already labeled them spacing, margin, roundness, color of the shape, and then the width and the height. So I'll plug these in as I start rigging. Then I have my text layer. I have a title text and then subtitle one and two and the shape layer. So none of them have any expressions yet. Nothing's rigged. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do, I want to move the anchor point to the top left of all of my text layers. That way they're fixated there. And to do that, I'm going to use smart anchor. So I have smart anchor. I'm going to copy it. We're going to go to text title. We're going to press A to reveal the anchor point and I'm going to paste the text in here. And so by default, it takes it to the X position left top. So left top. So it takes it to the top. I'm going to just copy this anchor point and we're going to paste it to all the other ones. So then I'm going to select all of my text layers and the shape layer and I'm going to hold shift and parent to my controls which will automatically kind of move everything there. What I want to do now is take the text layer and basically spread them together. So I'm going to go to the subtitle. I want to drop underneath the title. So we're going to go to smart position for that. So smart position. We're going to copy it. We're going to go to the position of subtitle one, paste it in here. And so the only thing I need to adjust is the spacing. So I'm going to take this spacing value and I'm going to plug it in for this. So we're just going to pick whip like that. 
So that's all I need to do. And then I'm gonna copy this position. We're gonna paste it to that one. So now they're spread nicely so you can actually control the spacing and everything adjusts. Next, what I wanna do is go to the size, the width and the height. So I wanna get the width of our text content and then the height and plug that in into our smart rack. Very simple, I'm gonna reveal it right here. So we have the width, let's solo it. I'm gonna use smart size collection, which is this right here. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna paste it for my width. I do have to adjust some parameters in here. So the size type, we're looking for width, but you can go height as well. So prefix, and basically that's what it's gonna be searching. It's gonna search for all the layers that have prefix. Mine is set to underscore by default. So these already have it. So it's gonna grab the size of those layers. So we're gonna say that's good. Then the spacing, I'm gonna adjust this and we're gonna set it to spacing right here. I do want for the width to grab the longest out of those three. So I don't wanna add them all together. I just wanna take the longest width and hold on to that. Right here, operation, I'm gonna set it to the longest. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it in here. Here. So as you can see, it will adjust the value. So I'm gonna copy this code and we're gonna go and do the same thing for the height. I'm gonna select this, solo it, alt click on a stopwatch to drop this in here. And so the only thing we need to adjust here is width. So instead of width, we're gonna say we want height. So I'm gonna copy that. I do wanna add all of them together because we wanna get the height. I don't wanna get the longest out of all three. I wanna add this plus the spacing, plus that, plus the spacing. So we have already typed in our spacing. So it's gonna add all of them together. So instead of longest, we're going to say we want the sum and just like that it will update the value so now i have the width and the height and as you can see they are right here so let's add a smart rack so right now it's just a rectangle that has all the parameters it's the same thing if you were to grab a rectangle tool and draw something you'll have the same parameters that's what i have so instead i'm going to right click on it and convert to bezier path this way it's going to get rid of all the parameters and only gives me the path which i can create my own path and i'm going to do that with code using smart rect function so this one right here i'm going to copy it and i'm going to paste it in here and so right away it creates a cube and it has the size the scale margin all of that in here so now i just have to plug things in so we're going to go to our controls here and for the size for the x size we're going to do the width so the width of our text and then for the y i'm going to replace it with the height and just like that, it will adjust it. I also want to plug in the margin width and height. Again, the same concept. You just go to the margin and instead of zero, we're going to plug it into the width. And then for the Y, we're going to do the same thing and link it up to the Y. OK, so now when I click away, as you can see, everything is adjusted. I can adjust the spacing and also the same thing for the width, the height. And then we have roundness. So that's something else I have to do. So as you can see, we have roundness. And we're just going to do top left and top right. So we're going to link up top left right here. We're going to replace this zero for we're going to do this roundness. Make sure it has comma at the end of it. OK, and then top right, we're going to do the same thing. Highlight the zero only and then we're going to do roundness. So now we are only adjusting the top. The only thing we have left is this background color. So we're gonna do this. We're going to find the background color of our shape. We're gonna solo it, alt click on the stopwatch. We're gonna link up this color to the color right here. And so now we can adjust it from here without looking for it in our timeline. My text does have a fill effect basically right here. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this color and we're gonna invert it. So we're gonna use smart color inverter, which lives right here. We're gonna copy it and we're gonna paste it in here and the only adjustment we really need to make is the color here so i'm going to select this color we're going to input that in here so we're going to highlight this and we're going to place it right here so we're going to say that value that's what we want and if i click away it will basically invert the color that's underneath there but i want it to be black and white so i'm going to say hey auto colors let's disable you we're going to say false and it's going to default to black and white so now if i select the controls here and if i adjust the color if I go to dark, it will go to white. If I go to black, it'll go to dark. I'm going to select this code that we just adjusted and we're gonna go to all the other ones. So we're gonna select both of these. We're gonna take this, alt click on the color stopwatch. I'm gonna paste it. Now we're gonna enable this one. So we're gonna say true. And when you click away, you'll see it will start inverting because I do wanna invert the color for the subtitles. Now it's too strong. So I wanna take the brightness sum up to be more lighter. So I'm gonna say 150, it goes up to 200. 200 will be white. So it's subtle. So I'm gonna take this and basically copy it do the same thing here and we're going to paste it for the subtitle too and now you're done and so now we can do all kinds of stuff we can adjust the size of the text things will adjust we can do the same thing here and we can bring in more right like this and things will rearrange. You can do this multiple times. That's how easy it is to create this responsive lower third using smart functions.